Hello there, person. Today's topic is load speed. Oh yeah, optimizations. I love optimizations. Uh, I was concerned that uh, the game wasn't loading fast enough on older hardware um, because basically there's a lot of processing that has to be done when um, models are loaded for many of these different uh, combinations of swords and hairstyles and all that kind of stuff. But basically every one of these models has to be compiled for these um, for these enemies and other players and stuff like that. So basically it just takes a long time for the, for the computer to process um, all those models. Um, so what I did is I created my own file format that basically I can I can go ahead and compile those models, cache them up, apply the shading. There's a lot of that shading too. So for example, as we turn the camera a little bit, you can see that these pillars like right here are darker than these ones over here. Or I'm sorry, the, the backs of these pillars right here are dark. And then if I rotate to this other camera angle, they're lighter. Man, this is annoying having this guy attack me here. All right, there we go. Um, so, so the, the intermediate format basically just is a really fast binary dump of all that stuff. So boomerang a zero dot model basically has 64 different, uh, let's take a look at boomerang. Uh, let's do, let's do uh, actually like pillar a, this is a really pillar a zero dot model. Um, let's look at the actual magic of voxel pillar for that. There's pillar a zero right here. So this is what it looks like um, when I when I uh, create the model in Magica, right? Um, but in the game, it has to go and rotate this model to eight different directions depending on whatever uh, camera angle we're at because there's eight different camera angles. You can see that the camera snaps at 45 degree angles. So it has to rotate every single model to the eight different angles and then also rotate it eight times at every single one of those model rotations for all the different light vectors that could be applied so if a um if a model can um if you can rotate the camera and you can also rotate the model then there's 64 different combinations of light vectors uh and, the, and we're, i'm talking about the directional light from the from the sunshine or whatever that's causing a cost uh casting a shadow and also causing the model to be shaded a certain way in the game let's actually uh, let's actually turn off these other players for a second. Um, it'll immediately load faster because we have eight times less the models to load. Um, you'll see, boom, see how fast that loads? There's a little white bar at the bottom of the screen. Um, actually, this is super awesome. I'm so excited about this. As a developer, this also helps me a great deal because the faster the game loads, the quicker I can make changes and the less distracting it is as a developer to make those changes. If you're if you if you want to go and you're like, Oop, I want to make a one tiny little change, blah 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 blah," and then you have to recompile and it takes a whole a whole minute. Let's say let's say let's say it takes you a minute to compile your game, which most games are more than that. You know what I mean? Um, I'm really excited about Wraithbinder because it compiles so dang fast, but then it also loads really fast now too. Because look how fast this loads. It's almost immediately there where it's got its game screen open and it's loading its bar. So everything is um, is basically just, it allows me to focus as a developer and do more, be more productive with my time. But also this is a great thing for players with slower laptops or, or maybe they don't have a solid state hard drive or things like that where it would take a long time. So let's take a look at what what's actually going on here. Pillar A dot model. Um, is 392 kilobytes. It's basically got all 64 of those models, um, all 64 of those rotations for this model are packed into this one file, and all of the uh, um, shading information is also in there. It's not just the. It's not just every single model has. Let's see. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, model voxel. Model voxel is a, basically a little structure for um, all the data that I track for every single voxel. So of each voxel has an index, a 3D position, um, an 8-bit color, which represents Magic of Voxels uh, palette. Like this might be, this is zero, this is one. Actually, that's 255, this is 254, or something like that. I can't, can't remember off my hand. But anyways, and it's got uh, 2D positions. X, uh, this is 3D normals, and then 2D normals as well. That allows me to do these new um, two-dimensional highlights. 
And then we have some unused bits and also then here's all the shading data. So we've got whether it's shaded, whether it's highlighted, whether it casts a shadow, whether it's one of the core voxels, meaning if it's a player, it's part of their core body, which allows me to do some cool rotations uh, for, a, for, arm, for limbs, for things that are not the core, I can be a little bit more accurate. Um, and then also um, edge, whether it's a 3D edge, whether it's a 2D edge, whether it's been shaded and whether it's been occluded, and then also the color. So all this gets packed into one uh, model voxel, and this is 16 bytes. So for basically, we could actually pretty much estimate the size of this model by uh, dividing 392 kilobytes by um, 64 different rotations, and then divide it again by 16 bytes. And it's about how many voxels are in this model here. So anyways, that's all packed together in this nice binary format, which loads super fast. And... Um, I'm not at all worried about this cache being uh, accurate cross-platform because I, um, because it can be recreated from from the model. So basically, we've got all these different models, these Vox files that'll be put into the game, right? This will be packaged with the game. These are assets. Let's look at pillar A. This might actually be big sized right now. Oh, no, it's 61 kilobytes. Okay, so that, that 61 kilobytes blows up to 392 kilobytes, but it's got all the data it needs. And that's in a cache that can be destroyed. It can also be not used at all. So let's check, it, check this out. Let's go ahead and destroy everything in this cache. Right now it's 1.6 gigabytes. And we'll watch the game go ahead and just recreate the cache. And then we can also, um, we can also see that the game uh, can also run without the cache too. So if there's no cache at all, it'll just take longer to load because it has to go and process the, all those models how it used to. So uh, let's go ahead and remove all the cache. I do this with this kind of a statement like that because uh, um, you actually can't remove that many files at once with whatever shell I'm using right now. I think I'm using fish. But anyways, so now we've got the cache folder. Oh, why does it still say 1.6 gigabytes? Oh, this thing just doesn't know what it's talking about. Okay, so now it's there. It's zero kilobytes in this cache. Let's go ahead and reload it. And what we'll see is it'll load. Actually, before we do that, let's turn on model verbosity. And you can and we can look at the log file and it'll show us all the stuff that it rebuilt. So this is going to take a lot longer to load because it's not only um, it's not only having to process the voxel files, but it has to um, save them to disk as well. So there we just loaded everything. You can tell. I don't know if you can hear it, but my laptop's fan just turned on. And that was another thing that was concerning me too, the reason why I did this, because if my, this is a really kick-ass laptop, it's super fast. If this thing is turning on one of its fans, that means it had to work really hard to load, right? And so this was happening very frequently, especially when I would load all the characters. Right now we're, no, we're only loading one character. We're limiting the players right here. And that means we're only loading one player and that's that's way more efficient. But if we, if we load all eight players, we definitely would have kicked the fan in. Uh, and uh, I that just concerns me for people's laptops and you know just the health of people's computers in general. I don't know why I care so much about efficiency, but I do. Uh, but anyways, it'll make things loading loading fast for people with slow laptops. Um, and so okay, let's look at the log for that run, and we can see that boom, it modelized all these models. So basically, it took the empty dot vox and turned it into empty dot model and and. That's what this word modelize mean. It basically just takes it and rotates it those 64 times and applies all the shading and all that, and then saves it to disk. Um, so we can actually, we can run this again. And what we'll see is that this time it won't modelize. It will just load everything from the cache because it already has it in the cache. So here we are, we've, boom, now it just says loaded. And we can see in the cache too, we could have seen this the other time, but we're at 300 megs in the cache right now. So boom, we've got you know all these models that just, it just cached up and was able to use, especially these things right here where all these player models have to be custom. Uh, I call it model, well, I call it compiling the model. Basically it's compiling a model from different pieces. Uh, it's, it's essentially it's procedural animation applied. And that's uh, if you want to take a quick look at that, that's stuff like this. So I, I do all my models in Blender using pieces, and then the Blender gets exported to all these exported all these keyframes, and the keyframes you're used to compile models. So it's a procedural animation technique. Uh, but here's the end result of it all. So let's go ahead and load all the players now. And this will take a lot longer to load because now we're going to go and take for the for those other seven players we have to go and modelize them all, save them to disk. 
And uh, so you can see even right there, boom, it was taking a long time even to hit the, the startup screen where we've got even a white bar going across the screen. And now we've got even longer, right? The, so while the screen is black right there, and we see that bar going across the screen, while it's still black, that just basically means that um, not all of the required models to load because um, basically there's a there's a lazy loading technique as well as this fast loading to this fast loading cache um, So the lazy loading the way that works is it only loads the models that it needs to before it can actually display the screen Right, so it loads like the players um, Walking around animation and their sword animation, but things like them holding their sword up in the air Some of this more special rare animations can just be lazy loaded like boom Just get the game going as fast as you can and then load all the the uh, animations uh, later. So um, now that we've loaded everything we can go back here to this log and we can see that it should have loaded a lot of models. Yeah, see here we're loading all these nicely. But then a lot of these will be modelized as well. So we modelize some of these other uh, players, models, and stuff like that. And then we also will see that the cache has grown greatly in size. Probably, yeah, up to 1.6 gigabytes again. So there you have it. That's how that all that works. Let's turn off one more little thing here. We can see that the game the game will actually reconstruct. Will actually be able to run without. Oh, this is in uh, a new place. I forgot. I do this with data now. So uh, this is a data file which kind of has the most important aspects of the entire game right here. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the cache path. So we're gonna disable cache path. And here, let's just make that kind of clear. There we go. Now it's not gonna use the cache at all. And in fact, we'll delete everything in the cache as well. So we so it's not using that, and then we will keep the model verbosity on, and we can see that it will run the whole game without without saving anything to the cache or using or relying on the cache at all. So once again, we've got this little bit of a uh, you know startup. Take startup takes a little bit longer. There's stuff that has to process for compiling models and all that. This this load is taking a while, but not quite as long as it would have if it had to save all these to disk. Etc. Etc. So we can we can actually just um, we can all tab out of this. Oh shoot. Oh wait. Is it okay? Yeah, it's still at zero bytes. All right. All right. So it's still loading. Dang, that's taking a while. But anyways, so it, the game can run itself perfectly fine without that cache. And that's once again, the point I was trying to make there was that I'm not worried at all about this, this binary file format being cross-platform compatible because every platform will create its own cache, right? If I'm on a big Indian system and um, um, it'll it'll save its its files in a big Indian format. If I'm a little Indian, it, it'll save all these files as little Indian and it doesn't really matter. So uh, let's once again look at the li the log file. We can see that it basically just cat. It's called it. It cached all these files instead of modelizing it. It just um, cached it in memory. You could say so. And it also says that it lists the vox file name. This actually technically should be a vox file name, but it's just the the log statement. It's not the. Uh, it's not actually saving that that ca that file that that model file format that I've created. So. Um, there you have it. There's an, another uh, little bit of development I've done on Wraithbinder. Um, this, uh, once again, this is great for players with slower machines and also great for me as a developer, keeping me focused on the edits I make. I, I, this is really important because right n lately I've been in this sort of development zone where I get things done so fast. Um, and maybe this is why. Heck, I have this super fast loading now. So, um, but basically what I'm trying to say there is that if you don't have this super fast loading, thoughts are going through your head, you're, you're forgetting things, and then all of a sudden you're distracted and 60 seconds go by, goes by and now your game's loaded and recompiled and you kind of lost the flow a bit. So the point is that now I can keep that flow, keep the flow flowing. All right, my friend, we'll catch you next time.